Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today I have another really fun Spellbinders card to share with you. So let's jump right in. So I know I am working with snowflakes and I know that I, I was done my Christmas in July series, but if you guys missed the last snowflake card that I made, uh, Spellbinders actually reached out to me and asked if I wanted to work with some of the new Bibby Cameron snowflake dies. And of course I jumped at the uh, option because you guys know I love snowflakes. So this is the second of the three cards that I will have coming with these really fun snowflake dies. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. So I did choose to use a cream base, which for me, I don't think I've ever used a cream base, but in the Simon Says Stamp card kits, sometimes they send card bases. And I had a bunch of these cream ones kind of just sitting here and I wasn't really sure what to do with them. And you guys know that I'm a big believer in using what you have. So I'm going to use a cream base for this card because I thought it would be kind of a fun thing to do that's a bit different. And I have the delicate snowflake dies here. And they have that kind of shadow layer and the top layer. So I cut the base layer out of some lavender cardstock. And then I'm going to cut this top layer out of this silver cardstock. And this is from Tim Holtz. It is the Sparkle Classics cardstock. And this stuff is stunning. If you haven't seen it in person yet, it's really pretty. <laughs> and originally I cut out six snowflakes. But in the end, I ended up needing nine. So I did do three more, just not on camera because you guys have seen me do this. So you don't really need to watch me do more of them. Um, but I did end up using nine of them in this card design, which you would have seen in the beginning of the uh, picture there. So I did cut all of those out and I double check the back of my glitter card stocks to make sure that it's cut through properly. The Tim Holtz one isn't as bad as some of the others ones that I own, the other glitter card stocks, but I still check the back just to be sure because I find sometimes the center doesn't cut out well. Um, and I did have that instance in this as well because I use the magic mat to kind of cut down on some of my die cutting, having to replace plates as often. Uh, sometimes it doesn't cut the centers as well as I would like it to. Not a big deal, but just something to be aware of. So you're going to see me, I think it's this one, after I get it kind of all poked out from the back, I end up ripping a leaf because the glitter hadn't quite let go when I go to pull it out. I'm pretty sure, yeah, right there. So you can see that I ripped that leaf. Not a big deal. We're still 100% going to use that. It's just something that I do struggle with with glitter cardstocks on occasion. If I used my plates and stuff instead, I probably would have a better time, but I, you know what, it's one of those things where I like to use what I have and sometimes I'm lazy. So instead of, you know, changing out what I should be using, I just use what I'm using and I'm happy with it. I believe I did use the Chrome one for this actually though. So this is just that I, I struggle a little bit with glitter card stocks, um, but I always make it work. So it's not really a big concern, but something to be aware of just because of how they're treated on the top. Sometimes some of the glitter card stocks don't cut as nicely as others. And I do find that in the center of these ones, the, the ones that kind of have the more pieces that pop out in the center, you're going to see that here in a second. This one was okay. But when I do the second one, I had a struggle trying to get those pieces out. I just brought in my mini snips and trimmed the little pieces that wouldn't come out. Not a big deal. Doesn't make it unusable. Again, I, <laughs> I don't aim for perfection in my creations as a general rule because... I don't think it's achievable. So I think you're setting yourself up for something that's kind of difficult, but I, I also, it's handmade, right? So I'm okay with it having that feel. Um, I always aim for a card that looks really pretty, but you know, it's, it's not meant to look like something you could easily replicate or, you know, there might be subtle mistakes, not a big deal. I don't, at least I don't think so completely up to you about how you feel about that, but I don't think so. And honestly, you guys, this this card was a struggle for me because I didn't like it. Um, I'll, I'll walk you through the point where I kind of got that feeling. And I, and I think I pulled it together in the end. Um, but I just, I, I struggled a bit with this one. I don't know if I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed today or, or what's going on. But I did struggle with this card a little bit. And here you can see I'm struggling to get those pieces out. And eventually I did just bring in my mini snips and kind of trim them from the back. So that wasn't a big issue. And then I'm going to use my liquid glue. This is just because for a couple of reasons, uh, liquid glue gives me some time to move things around. So I find that way easier when adhering pieces like this. Um, but also it has that super fine tip. So I end up not having glue kind of smudge out all over the place when I'm trying to adhere little pieces like this. So I prefer liquid glue for that kind of, kind of thing but I mean completely up to you uh, this is just kind of my preference you could of course run these through you know like a sticker maker or um, have added a double-sided adhesive before you die cut them 
that would have been a great thing. Although I generally forget I can do that. So I pretty much never do it. Um, the only exception is if it's something really small, I can use my little Xyron sticker maker and I'll use that. Uh, but as a general rule, I forget to add double-sided adhesive to things. So I just end up adding glue, which for me personally is better anyways, because I need a little time to line it up. So that liquid glue kind of gives me that. And because these pieces are a bit delicate, they didn't stay perfectly where they should have. So it kind of gives me time to shift them around as I get them to adhere to that lavender piece behind them. Now, had I been thinking, again, remember this card didn't come together quite how I was hoping. Uh, if I had been thinking, I would have actually blended some of the seedless preserves onto these pieces of purple cardstock, the lavender cardstock, to kind of tie together my sentiment that you're going to see here in a minute. But I didn't, it didn't occur to me to do that at the time, so they don't have that color. But if I was going to recreate this card, I would have maybe blended it around the edges to give the, the color a little more interest. And normally that's something I would do, but this card, this card just kind of didn't come together in my head the way I thought it was going to. So I struggled a bit. Um, so, I mean, even at this point, I could have blended just a little bit of seedless preserves around them to kind of bring in that color. I didn't, and I can't go back from here, but I would have had I, I you know, if I redo this card, I, I would do that. So here I'm just adding a like one 3D foam square. It's the thin ones behind each snowflake in the center, just to give them a little bit of dimension. I don't want them to be propped up really high because, you know, I, I do mail a lot of my cards, but I want dimension. I love dimension and texture in my cards. I think that's why I ended up struggling with this a bit because I didn't really add much dimension and texture until the end. So at this point, I, I honestly, I kind of hated this card. I shouldn't say hate. Hate is a strong word. I didn't hate it, but I wasn't happy with where it was going. But it's one of those things where you kind of try to work through what's going on, you know, so I'm like, okay, just because... I record these videos and if I make a card I hate, it hasn't happened, but this is an option and I tell myself this, that if I make a card I hate that I just, I don't want to share because I'm really not proud of how it came out, I don't have to share it, right? Like that's up to me because this is my channel and this is my creations and this is my, you know, my little, little part of the internet. So I don't have to create, like share things that I don't enjoy. So I always kind of make myself push through. Like it's like, okay, you don't like it here, but that's okay. Like there's more things to add. I knew there was going to be weird gapping. I knew this because there isn't any small snowflakes in this design set, there's large ones. So I knew they weren't gonna fit together perfectly and I knew that there would be gaps that I didn't like. And I knew I was gonna fix that. But at this stage of it, I just didn't like it, you know? And it, it's funny. And I honestly think that had I blended a little bit of that seedless preserves onto that purple, I would have liked this a lot better because it would have given me some more of what I like out of cards. This is kind of a bit more simple for me generally you guys know if you've been with my channel for a little while I would have added different colors I would have added some splashes I would have added different texture and at this point I'm like maybe I should have put a panel behind these snowflakes you know but at this point it's too late I've, I've done what I've done and we're going to go forward and we're going to try to fix what I don't like about it so I brought in the snowflake wishes stamps and die set which is another spellbinders one it's beautiful it comes with I think four dies and a whole bunch of sentiments great great set of sentiments um, and I am going to turn this into a Christmas card just because snowflakes as a general rule will make me think of Christmas. So that is what I'm going to do. But I cut that sentiment kind of die piece out of that same lavender cardstock. And this is where I'm going to bring in the seedless preserves. Now, again, had I been thinking I would have added it in the beginning and it would have tied this card together a little bit better. But oh, and I left this in because Mist had to come and do some quality control. She uh, had to check out my die cutting, make sure that I was doing it properly. She's going to pop up in a later clip as well. And I left that in just so you guys could enjoy her presence because she's incredibly sweet and has to supervise my card making. Um, but I had to pop out those little pieces just in the words so you could read wishing. And then this is where I brought in the seedless preserves. And you're going to see that I'm just going to kind of create a bit of an ombre between that seedless preserves and the lavender. And I think this really took it up and and this is where I wish I had done it on the snowflakes but at this point I've already adhered them down so it would have been really difficult to kind of change that now you could theoretically kind of pop up the legs of the snowflake because of course I didn't adhere those and add a little bit of color you could absolutely do that 
I wasn't going to do that because I was too, way too lazy for that. Um, but that's an option. But I also did bring in that same cream cardstock that the base is made out of because I own it. It's from Simon. And I cut that wishing three more times out of that cream cardstock so that I could layer it up and add a little more dimension. Because again, for me, this card is missing that. There isn't enough dimension and interest in it. So I'm struggling with it. So this is where I'm adhering them together. And this is where she decides that it's time to cuddle. So she actually smacked me in the face right there. She, she didn't smack me. She poked me a few times and then she's gonna book it across my desk try to put her tail in my glue and just generally be a huge help right like she's just making sure that I know what I'm doing and helping out loads so I left this in just so you guys could enjoy my my fluffy kitten trying to be super helpful here I think she knocked my other thing of glue over you know she's playing with some of the pearls I had sitting on the side there like she's just being generally very helpful. So I did layer up those three layers of that cream cardstock and we had a cuddle session after I finished doing that. And then I'm going to stamp out my sentiment. So this is from that same sentiment set and die set that the wishing is from. And I, it is a Christmas sentiment. That is just what I chose to do. And I am going to stamp it in that same seedless preserves oxide just to kind of tie that together a little better. I'm making sure it's straight here. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of stamp that out and it just says, I think it says wishing you a Merry Christmas, I believe. Uh, let's double check that. I'm pretty sure it says wishing you a Merry Christmas. Yeah, it does. Uh, so I did choose to make this a Christmas card. You don't, oh, a very Merry Christmas. You don't have to do that. There was other sentiments in there. There's birthday sentiments and there's, you know, thinking of you sentiments and there's lots of different sentiments. Completely up to you. I just have a tendency towards Christmas cards with snowflakes. It's just what I like to do, but you could absolutely make this something else. This is just my, my thought process. So I layered those up so it would add some extra dimension in that sentiment, just because I thought that would be really pretty. And then I'm going to just adhere it straight down to those snowflakes because I already have that three layers of cards, well, four layers of cardstock there. It's added quite a bit of height. So I don't really need to add foam or anything behind it unless you really want it to stand up. Then you could do that. But I chose to just adhere it straight onto the snowflakes in the bottom kind of right hand corner there. And then I did put it like a little block on. So <laughs> this is where I was going to fix those gaps because the gaps I knew were going to be an issue. I knew that going in. So I was like, well, this is like a person who loves pearls dream. So if you guys like pearls half as much as I do, you know that this is my jam right here. I <laughs> love pearls. So I have these. These are an off white pearl. These are the satin blanc pearls by Studio Katia. And I just kind of put them where I felt they were needed in those weird gaps between the snowflakes. And this card came together. And in the end, I really liked it. But man, I struggled going through it. And I did have to walk away. I went and had a cup of tea. You know, I, I had to walk away from it. But I think in the end, though, it's not quite what I was going for. It turned out pretty and it was a learning experience for me. So I would love to know what you guys think. What would you have done differently? If anything, let me know. It's, it's always super interesting to me, you know, what different ideas come from different people. So let me know if you have any thoughts on this card. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a like, leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday and I am going to respond to all those comments. I'm just a little bit behind, but I do always respond. Thank you so much guys and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.